Hey everyone, just Goran here, and welcome to what I guess is my first video about Prehistoric Kingdom. Yes, pretty much like any other Planet Zoo YouTuber, I've decided to hop on the PK bandwagon. Seriously though, I've been interested in Prehistoric Kingdom for a while, pretty much ever since I saw some gameplay of it, which had some very promising features. So today I decided to really dig in and go through each of the Prehistoric Kingdom devlogs to see what other features the game might have up its sleeve. And I found a bunch of awesome innovations that I could only wish we had in Planet Zoo as well. Starting off with the Skill Tool, a commonly requested feature for Planet Zoo, Prehistoric Kingdom will feature a Skill Tool which will allow you to enlarge, stretch and otherwise manipulate the size of objects in the game. I cannot stress enough how powerful of a tool this is. It brings a whole new layer of creativity to all the pieces in the game, stretching objects to make them fit a space, making objects smaller for detail work, or varying the sizes of plants to create more variety. The only downside to a Skill Tool is that stretch objects their textures might have a chance not to look as good as their unmanipulated counterparts, but even this is something that PK has a solution for. Some items, like this mulch, will have wool aligned textures, meaning that they will always look the same. No matter how you stretch or size the object, its texture will have the same look. So you can shape them however you want without it looking odd. Number two, the improved 3D gizmo. As soon as I saw the 3D gizmo in Prehistoric Kingdom for the first time, I got super excited and immediately missed it whenever I was working with the gizmo in Planet Zoo. In PK, the gizmo not only has arrows to drag or rings to rotate objects in any of the free axes, but there will also be these little areas in between the axes that you can drag, allowing you to manipulate multiple axes at once. This is super useful and will be such a huge time saver. For example, when you want to move an object diagonally, you won't have to move it to the left and then to the right and to the left again. You'll just instead be able to go straight and place it immediately where you want it to be. Number three, turn aviaries invisible. Now this one got a lot of attention, so you've probably heard of it before, but this is another thing that I've been wanting to see in Planet Zoo for ages. And this has to do with PK's version of exhibits. PK's mini exhibits, as they're called, work much like Planet Zoo's exhibits in the way that they'll feature a smaller animal and you can customize some of its contents, like uh, the enrichment items. The big difference, where PK definitely takes the cake, is that in PK you are able to disable the exterior of the exhibit. Doing this allows you to make your own aviaries, custom habitats, and pretty much anything you want. It's a huge upgrade from what we're able to do with exhibits in Planet Zoo, all from such a simple little change. If only we could do the same in Planet Zoo, like we would be able to make our own frog ponds, iguana enclosures, just anything. Number four, painting rocks and foliage. Planting tons of foliage can be quite a hassle, especially since in order for it to look good, you want to rotate plants around, and in the case of Prehistoric Kingdom, you want to give each plant a slightly different skill as well to avoid repetition. Prehistoric Kingdom has an amazing quality of life feature that saves you a ton of time. In PK's terrain editing tool, you do not only have brushes to paint terrain, but foliage as well. These brushes automatically scale and rotate the plants at random, so you can just create great looking dense forests in mere seconds. And after painting, every plant can be edited just like you would if you were to place them manually. It's just such a huge quality of life upgrade. Number five, more shapes for grid pieces. Planet Zoo has a whole bunch of basic shapes for all the grid pieces. You've got your one meter, two meter, and four meter walls, a couple of windows, diagonals, and you name it. But by the looks of it, Prehistoric Kingdom will have even more. Look at these curved roof pieces, for example. What's even better though, every grid piece will be available to all wall types, which is not the case in Planet Zoo. For example, the wall with the circle in the middle is only available to the plaster. And though we do have some of those curved roof pieces, they are kind of exclusive to uh, some of the glass sets, for example. By having all the wall types available for all the shapes, it is so much easier to combine the various wall types and really get creative with them. So that in and of itself is already a huge upgrade, but the main reason Prehistoric Kingdom does this is for one of the best features it has, number six, changing the material of grid pieces on the fly. If you build a building in Planet Zoo out of wood, but you'd rather have it be made out of stone, tough luck, you've got to delete all the wood and replace it with stone. In Prehistoric Kingdom, however, you can simply select the walls you want to change and change them. It's that simple. Probably one of the best quality of life improvements Prehistoric Kingdom has over Planet Zoo.
Number seven, rope fences. Now, this might be something small, but with the insane amount of custom rope fences I've had to build due to a lack of them existing in Planet Zoo, it is a significant feature to me. One of the many fence types Prehistoric Kingdom will have is a rope fence. And this is a type of fence that you will see in almost every zoo or park. So I've always been somewhat surprised that it's not featured in Planet Zoo. Of course, this is not really a fence you would use to keep any animals out, especially dinosaurs, but it's such a nice fence to use as an aesthetic tool around your zoo. And including it in the game, I think will allow a lot of people to make some great looking zoos. Number eight, improved editable signs. One of the things zoo games can probably never have enough of is signs. And I have to say, the signs in Planet Zoo are pretty lackluster. You got your monitors for education signs, and you have editable signs. And these editable signs have huge limitations. I find it especially frustrating how fonts become unreadable on certain signs, and how you are limited to a single line of text, even on the more vertical signs. While I'm not sure if Prehistoric Kingdom will fix all of these issues, it does appear they are aware of the importance of signs and are committed to give us more freedom in designing our signs. By letting us pick design types per sign for instance, stuff like this makes me very optimistic about this aspect of the game. Number 9. Diseases visually affect animals. Not a major thing, but animal variety has always been a much talked about topic in the Planet Zoo community. And by animal variety, I mean variety between the same species of animals. Planet Zoo has received updates that expand the amount of variety in the colors species can have, but Prehistoric Kingdom shows us there are always more improvements to be made. In this case, animals in PK are going to be visually affected by things like disease. If they have a certain type of skin condition, for example, this will change what the animal looks like, much like how wounded animals in Planet Zoo have scars. It just brings another layer to the animal variety and makes animals more recognizable. Number 10, the park map. This last awesome feature that Prehistoric Kingdom will have is a zoo map. And this menu shows you a map of your zoo that includes the habitats, infrastructure and much more. I think it looks so cool and I hope we get some way to place a physical version of it in your prehistoric parks as well. Because that in particular is something I would love in Planet Zoo. So there we have it, 10 features Prehistoric Kingdom will have that Planet Zoo doesn't have and I for one would actually love to see in Planet Zoo as well. There are many more features in Prehistoric Kingdom that are worth checking out, but I either didn't really need them in Planet Zoo or they didn't affect me as much since I primarily play Sandbox. So I highly recommend, if you haven't already, that you check out Prehistoric Kingdom. I'm sure you'll be seeing plenty of videos about it pop up in the near future, with the alpha being around the corner. I don't know exactly when I'm going to start covering it, since I don't plan to buy the alpha axes, but I do plan on playing it in the future. Before we end up this video, let's cut Planet Zoo some slack and look at a feature Planet Zoo has that, from what I can tell, Prehistoric Kingdom is not going to have. Customizable fence height. PK's fence heights are locked at 1, 2.5, 4 and 6 meter variants, while in Planet Zoo we can just drag our fences to any height you want. Which, I gotta say, is a feature I use a whole lot to get some interesting fence types going. And I'm sure Planet Zoo does other things very well that we might not see in Prehistoric Kingdom. So let's not be too harsh on Frontier. So with that said, I just want to thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video stream or whatever comes first.